So this hot man is a social ownership. Welcome to the final Adam and Sheridan show video podcast on YouTube. I'm Adam Courtright. I'm Sheridan. It's not the final. It's a final before a retooling. Yes, a reboot. Um, absolutely. So we have, um, you know, we have noticed that the viewership has dropped off. We have noticed that people are not as interested as they once were mm-hmm. in us, which is weird because we're super interesting. Yes. But we've noticed a slight we, increase in the death threats. Yeah. Uh, just a little um, bit. So. But we but we figured what we could do is we could we could change it up a little bit and see see what kind of a format um, you as our viewers would like. So if you have any suggestions, please let us know at show at gmail.com. But we're going to come back with a monthly show after a one-month break. And please, uh, with your suggestions, uh, don't suggest that we wear suits and ties because we're not, we're not going to do that. Yeah, and Kenny, no strippers. No strippers. It's just not happening. At least not, on, not the show. Happening. on the show. But with our last show, we're going to continue uh, what we have been talking about, which is Kashama Watch. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kshama Swan actually recently spoke on Democracy Now! about the Boeing strike, and we'll go to the clip now. For people who have been following the news, you will know that Boeing workers, the workers in the state of Washington, have been extremely courageous, and we've been in solidarity with them in rejecting the really, uh, uh, this, is, this is economic blackmail by the Boeing CEOs, and they have extracted tens of billions of dollars of subsidies from the state, and this is yet another example of why we need an alternative to the Democrats and Republicans. You know, the Democrats have colluded as much as the Republicans in the state legislature, totally sold out the Boeing workers and urging them to accept this really uh, this real assault on their living standards. Washington and approved the largest com- corporate tax break um, by a state to a single yes. corporation in U.S. history. That's quite astounding. Yes. So there were some good things that she said in that clip there. Um, there were some great things. Mm-hmm. And, and this is the first time I've ever, I've ever heard her address this, frankly. So the, 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 the Boeing contract, yeah. specifically the contract that back in November, it was a concessions-laden contract um, put on Boeing workers by management, mm-hmm. uh, cutting wages over 10 years, et cetera. You know, you know the drill. And, I, and they I, voted I, down, I they voted down by two-thirds. And I, w- then I was happy with her speech because she said it was economic blackmail, and it was, mm-hmm. and it was forced through by the powers that be, even though that there were, you know, Boeing has been given, um, you know, uh, economic boon after economic boon um, by, you know, capitalist politicians. By doing these things, though, by, by but, cutting wages. Yes. That's, that's how they make their money. But you had a problem with it. I did. She she did. She mentioned correctly the, the Democratic Party's collusion with the CEO of Boeing and mm-hmm. how the CEO was, um, you know, as a matter of policy, was was instituting these these wage cuts and benefit cuts. What she failed to mention was how the president of the union involved, I believe it's the uh, SEIU union, uh, international president, uh, refused to honor the uh, requested recount for the revote in January because the the a vote in January was less than half the membership. Mm-hmm. So, uh, one me- third. Yeah, well, members said well, we wanted to do a revote because now mm-hmm. that we're all here after the holiday, um, we think that there might be a different result. Mm-hmm. It was shut down, completely yeah. shut down by the president of the union. She should have gone after the union, the union heads who are getting money, dues money from these workers. And these union heads have a vested interest in these workers continuing to work at Boeing no matter what, even if their wages are cut. Yep. So she needs to go after that, uh, after that segment more. Um, sure, keep going after the Democrats, keep going after the corporate CEOs, but you have to go after the union heads as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Um, but you did have, I, I, I turned you on to a couple of videos, mm-hmm. her response to the State of the Union. And the State of the Union, it's, it's, it's getting to the point where I can't even, I can't no. even listen um, to things like that because of how, how ridiculously simplistic... I stopped, I stopped listening after he said the state of our union is strong. I said, no. State of our union is strong. Nope. No, it's not strong, oh. and you're, you're in, insulting me. So you actually, stopped, you actually stopped No, listening? I had it on okay. in the background. Because and, and there, there was, notes, there was some great like working class cred thrown out there. there Seriously. Was, there but was, but it was kind so of like, obvious listen, pandering, though. Listen, I come from you folk. Um, it was really, it was, it was pandering. They cut to a few people who got to stand up while someone in power spoke for them. Right. Um, but, 
but oh my goodness, I couldn't listen to it. But Kshama's uh, uh, response to it was actually pretty fiery and pretty mm -hmm. pretty spot on, I think. So, so one of the things that she mentioned was the Democrats are, including Obama, are trying to raise the minimum wage to ten dollars ten cents an hour. Oh. But she and her fifteen now campaign wants to bring it up to fifteen dollars an hour. So yeah. she's saying things like, "Well, the Democrats are just basically trying to, uh, you know, pose Split and the yeah, po I mean. pose as working class uh, advocates and get them to vote for the Democrats for ten ten rather than mm -hmm. a more radical alternative." And yeah. it's a it's a strategy. They don't mean it. Once uh, the Democrats get reelected, they're going to abandon it probably. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, that, that makes sense. So go watch that. You can go to the Socialist Alternative website, socialistalternative.org. Um, and we have a, another bit of news that we're going to end the show today on. Mm -hmm. um, Pete Seeger, yes. um, radical mu musician, um, shut down uh, McCarthy at his... Refused to name yeah. names. Refused uh, to name names. Duak. He invoked the First Amendment, not the Fifth. Right, good he, point. He uh, offered to sing songs. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he, he was... He was Sentenced to a year in prison, but that was eventually overturned. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he, he fought McCarthyism, and he fought McCarthy, and he fought the Congressional uh, he, House of Un-American Activities. He was a member of the yeah. Communist yeah. Party in the 1940s. He was. Uh, which he later renounced due to its uh, connections with, with Joseph Stalin. But, yeah. um, of course, that caused him to get um, called to the House of Un-American Activities Committee, and they said, okay, uh, you know, were you ever a member of the Communist Party and name names? And he was very polite, you know, he yeah. said, um, uh, I'm not going to invoke the Fifth Amendment, as you say. Yeah. I'm simply not going to answer your question because it's my First Amendment right to do and believe whatever I damn well please, and yeah. you can go to hell. Yeah. He didn't say it that way, but... <laughs> but that's essentially what he was saying for yeah. 19... and that's very courageous. Yeah, but it was, um, you know, he, he, he remained an activist, he remained... Um, you know, a fighter for environmental rights, for workers' rights. He was strong with Woody Guthrie. Um, and and the we the rest of the weavers in in fighting for at that time what were the the radical unions, mm -hmm. um, and they're fighting for for workers' rights. Although and he, he was he, chased out of he was chased out of Peekskill, New York, by the KKK really? because yeah, for a 1947 I believe um, civil rights rally that he helped put there. So they they chased him. And the rest of the Weavers that is actually a, that is a funny image. out of town because I know it they were trying. Be, but it's yeah. just a funny image to see Pete Seeger running with with his banjo. Yeah, um, as the KKK well, they chases him out of town. They chased the Weavers basically who were performing at this thing, and they helped set it up. They chased him out of town. They were intending to kill him. At which wow. I mean, seriously, he's got an incredible life. Um, my mom, uh, who who knew this song from from Pete Seeger, not from uh, Melvina Reynolds, I think, who originally little boxes. Wrote it. Yeah, we played she, that. For she sure. quoted that. Um, at her high school graduation was uh, 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 pulled off stage and off TV because mm -hmm. it was being broadcast on TV. So he's got a connection with my family too. But um, we're going to end the show today with a quote from Pete Seeger from the documentary Seeing Red. Just as it's better to have loved and lost than never to have loved before, it's better to have struggled and lost than never to have struggled. I think the saddest thing are the people who are scared to struggle. You know the famous poem, Mourn not the dead, but rather mourn the apathetic throng, the cowed, the meek, that know the world's great anguish and its wrong, but dare not speak. So really, if you're going to mourn, don't mourn for a fighter who made a mistake and lost, but mourn the suckers who never bothered putting up a fight. The wonderful and beautiful Pete Seeger dead at the age of 94 on January 27th. He lived a long full life and we thank you for our mu for your music check out our very first adam and sheridan show which we re-aired this yeah. past week because we played pete seeger's music on it you can check out our show at um wrfalp.com fridays at six sundays at 11 a.m you can check it out on soundcloud and the radio show will be continuing weekly mm -hmm. uh even though the show is on hiatus we're going to be celebrating our fourth year anniversary on the Aww. show that airs february 15. Oh, be four years longer so. than my marriage. Yeah, that, that's a that's a long time to that be doing is. this. Boy, mm -hmm. I don't know. Are we getting paid yet? All right, <laughs> uh, you can uh, join us on Facebook, the Adam mm -hmm. and Sheridan Show. There, of course, subscribe to the page. Um, uh, YouTube Follow page. us on Twitter. Yep. And one more time, email us Adam and Sheridan Show at gmail.com if you want to add any thoughts, even if you don't agree with us. Please do it. 
And uh, with that, we'll see you in one month. My name's Adam Courtright. My name's Sheridan. Stay active. I'm not here tonight to sing, but to learn from you. I'm looking forward to your questions. However, a song I wrote, oh, 50 or 60 years ago, uh, I find is still got meaning. And so, You know who it's darkest before the dawn. This thought keeps me moving on. If we could heed these early warnings, the time is now quite early morning. If we could heed. Oh, the second half of every song is repeated. <clears throat> Clear out your throats. <laughs> now, I'm serious. Some will say, well, I can't sing. You don't have to sing loudly. But the second half of that song said, if we could heed these early warnings, the time is now quite early morning. If we could heed. These early warnings, the time is now, quite early morning. Some say that humankind won't long endure, but what makes them feel so doggone sure? I know that you who hear my singing could make those freedom bells go ringing. I know that you who hear my singing, who hear my singing, could make those freedom bells, could make those freedom bells go ringing. And so we keep on while we live until we have no no more to give and when these fingers can strum no longer and the old banjo to the young ones stronger when we and when these fingers and strum no law, and the old banjo, and the old banjo, the young one stronger. Don't you know it's darkest before the dawn? This thought keeps me moving on through all this world of joy and sorrow. We still can have singing tomorrows 
through all this world of joy and sorrow, of joy and sorrow, we still can have, we still can have singing tomorrow, singing tomorrow, sing it again through all this world. Joy, sorrow, we still can have singing tomorrow. Sing it again through all this world of joy and sorrow. We still, we still can have. Singing to